701, May, May 18th, 2017, I'm going to call the uh, Freeburg Community High School District 77 Board of Education uh, meeting to order. Ms. Meath, would you call roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Parrish? Here. Mrs. Stahl? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Madrell? Here. Mr. Haas? Mr. Wilkerson? Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Gauck? Here. Yes, six. That's quorum. We please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. 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 Time. Do we have any agenda changes? No, uh, we do not. Okay. Uh, we're going to open it up for uh, public comments. We'd like to thank the public for coming tonight. Uh, if you do have any comments, we'd like to keep those to two minutes each. Uh, we'll open it up right now. Please, if you have a comment, uh, please uh, state your name before you start your comment. Any comments? Thank you. Where would you like me to stand? Wherever is fine. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Gary Arnold. Uh, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I'm a member of Little People of America. I'm the, the president of Little People of America. I will be uh, for a short time, a lot longer. I've served two terms. Uh, thank you for having the public comment period. Uh, and, and thank you for, for giving the, the chance uh, for, for me to speak. Um, this is my, not my first time to Freeburg. Uh, I don't know if I've met a few of you before, but I was in here, here in 2011 and 2015, um, and, and I'm back here tonight. And, and each time I, I come back, um, I'm here because of the mascot, uh, as you may know. Um, and I'm here tonight uh, to put out another call. I know uh, some of you are new board members, and this is the first meeting of a new term. And, uh, I'd like to put out a call uh, asking you as a board uh, to do what it takes to, to change the, the mascot. Um, I want you to change it, and the organization Little People of America wants you to change it. And I know, um, you know most of the people here in town support it, but there are at least two parents uh, of a student here that support changing the mascot, and uh, there are a few alumni also that, that uh, support changing it. Clearly, though, obviously, you know, the majority of, of Freeburg and the majority of the, the students and alumni who are here um, want to keep it uh, and, and believe in it. Um, and, and we understand that. And, and we understand that in 2015, uh, uh, when, when some people came, you know, we were told that as far as you were concerned, the issue was closed. Um, but for me and for, for little people of America, um, the issue is not going to be closed until Freeburg, as well as the other schools, uh, around the country that have Midget as a mascot uh, changed their names. Um, I personally would never, and my friends and family would never, and many, if not most, of the members of the dwarfism community would never feel welcome in a place that uses the word Midget, no matter how it's used, no matter like if it comes from a good place. Um, I understand this is, the, as I said, this is the first meeting uh, 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 of the term for, for the for new school board members. I congratulate all of you and I wish you success in your service and in your term. But my request and my ask of you is that you use this term on the school board to make this school a place where not just the people of Freeburg feel comfortable, but where everyone, including little people of America, uh, all across the country would feel comfortable. So thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other comments at this time? Uh, at this time, we need to approve the consent agenda. I think everyone had a chance to look this over. Do we have a motion? Oh, sorry. We need to roll call vote this. We need a motion first. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Madrell. Second. Second by Mr. Gaub. Now we need to roll call vote. Sorry. We'll start with Victoria Stop. Aye. 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 It's approved on to committee reports. Uh, the Finance Committee let, met last night, uh, gave a presentation uh, to the board members present, and uh, talked about the state of the financial situation in the district, and then got to the budget. Uh, what I'd like to do is to kind of go through some of the highlights 
uh, that we went through last night. Uh, I have shared, you do have a copy of the uh, presentation in your packet. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, once I go through this review. And then uh, I'll also put that on the website uh, so that anybody can have access to it. Um, history uh, of uh, things that have happened, we looked at from fiscal year 08 to 17. Uh, the tax rate um, has, it went from 1.9234 uh, to 2.4158, which is about a 49 cent increase. Uh, the EAV increased from about 252 million to 263 million, which is only about a 4% increase. Uh, the state share of revenue has dropped from 35% to 20%, while the local revenue has increased from 62% to 75%, which has uh, been fairly difficult for taxpayers. Uh, while most of the funds have been stable, the Ed Fund has decreased from a high of about $2.3 million uh, to an anticipated $63,000 at the end of fiscal year 17. Uh, we have uh, an, an effort to reduce costs. We have reduced our staff in that time about 48 and a half staff members to about 41 and a half staff members. Um, explained to the uh, members present last night that I felt like our staff uh, staffing is um, is adequate. It's very it's, it's it's right on the money right now. We don't have uh, any fat in our staffing. Um, some good news we anticipate with some retirements and some changes, uh, reduction in administrative position that our salary and benefits for next year is going to drop about $108,000, which works out to be about a 2.14% decrease in expenditures. Um, because of our uh, increase in torque in the levy last year, we did not anticipate the need to transfer money from the operation and maintenance of the transportation fund to the ED fund. So that's a positive for both of the building and the transportation since we have an old building and old buses, so we can start looking at possibly uh, upgrading some things in the building and putting our buses on a schedule to upgrade. Uh, because of the uh, expenditures in tort, um, we are going to need to amend the budget. If the tort expenditures uh, exceed 10% of the budget balance, we're required to amend the budget. Uh, so there is a uh, item later on about amending the budget. Uh, the other very positive thing that came about is we took a look at the financial profile. That's what we were listed as financial watch <coughs> last year, which is the lowest you could get. And we are anticipating that we will bump up two levels to financial review uh, for this last year. Uh, this was due to an increase in the general state aid and the increase in tort. Tort is not calculated directly in the financial uh, profile. What it did is it allowed us to transfer some of those expenses from the uh, Ed Fund, which then that does um, affect it. And so overall, um, we, we're, we're moving in the right direction. Our Ed Fund balance is something we're going to have to work on because that's where most of our money comes from, or most of the money that we spend on educating the students comes from the Ed Fund. So that's something we're definitely going to have to keep working on. Uh, but overall, it was a, um, I think, a, a pretty positive year, at least trying to move in the right direction. So I don't know if anybody has any questions about anything we covered. I went fairly quickly. Okay. Okay. Student members report. Mr. Wolfson is not back in the uh, sectionals. I can tell you that he did break the school record again. And we had quite a few people qualify for state. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Let, 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 let hey, me go. Hey, right your child, your principal's son, report next. <laughs> no, that's sorry. fine. That's, it's, it's, it's very exciting for Drew. Great news. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so some academic stuff. Senior finals are complete. They are out of the building. They are excited and happy and ready to go, but they will all be back tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. for graduation practice. And then graduation is actually this Sunday, May 21st at 2 o'clock. And um, I don't know if, Jane, have you talked to board or email gone out about board members meeting and what time? You got that? Oh. No. Rocket. So usually the, you can take oh, over if you want. 20 till. About 20 till? Yeah. So about. Cut my, my office. 140, you're going to meet in the main office? 
Um, you all get to walk in together. There's going to be seats for you. They're actually up there by the graduation podium. Um, so actually the, the faculty, the board I think walks in first, and then the faculty and then the kids. Um, and then you'll be right there. So if you, I, I heard some talk about switching up to hand out diplomas, and you'll be right there, okay? Um, the good news is, too, is that you get to kind of exit all together first because as soon as the, the kids are through, the parents are ready to go and take pictures and you kind of get a little bit mobbed, so it's kind of nice to be able to come in and out. Um, but it, it's, it's a really fantastic event, so um, dress cool if you can. I know the suits and stuff. It, uh, once we get going, we'll turn the AC off and it gets pretty warm in there. So, uh, so just meet in the office and we'll be ready to go. So, um, Art on the Square is also this weekend. Um, I sent an email to all of your school emails um, and it has a link on it. If you click on the link, it'll take you to the art page and you can see all of the entries for Art on the Square. If you are gonna go to vote for those, um, our kids, we have nine kids competing. Um, there are kids from all over the Metro East. So when you go into the basement of the, the, the Bank of America, I don't think it's the bank anymore, there are just pictures upon pictures, so it kind of helps have an, an idea of what you might be looking for for the kids. Um, they can earn scholarship money, they can win awards and prizes. Um, I think it takes a lot of courage for our kids to, to put that work out there, and, and, and it's excellent. I'm, I'm so proud of the kids. Um, voting um, is Friday um, the 19th from 5 to 10 p.m., and then also Saturday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and that's also in the email. Um, the students that have artwork for display, Eva Weber, Lizzie Staub, Brett Harris, Katherine Schaefer, Katie Schaefer, Olivia Richards, Caitlin Clutter, Olivia Lester, Katherine Marler, and Jade Lickerbrock. So con congratulations and good luck to all those students. Um, the band had their annual pop concert and spaghetti dinner last Friday. I know they were prepping for that quite a bit. It's, it's a good fundraiser for them. And, um, gives a chance, the kids a chance to do more individual performance and kind of break out of the whole band. So they always do a really good job with that. Um, we got some good news. This is not in the report because I just got this yesterday. But um, girls basketball, boys basketball, girls bowling, boys bowling, and competitive cheer, all of our winter sports, um, received recognition from the IHSA for their academic performance. All five of the teams met the um, GPA for academics. So it's, it's nice that it's such a big sporting thing, but it also recognizes the kids for, for their work in the classroom, which in the long run is what we need. Um, other things, um, the summer gifted program is currently getting organized. The art department will be running that this year. Um, the kids that sign up for the gifted have like a field trip over a five day period. They have projects, they have uh, work, um, so that's getting off the ground and it, it rotates from departments each year and, and ARC is taking it this year. Um, FCHS will also be offering enrichment classes and this is to incoming freshmen <coughs> um, reading and math skills so that these kids have a chance to, to bump up on some skills before coming into high school if they need that. So that's underway too. Um, let's see. If you look behind you and you're wondering, we're not, you know, creating antennas here to get more reception. Um, this is a cooperative project that the geometry classes have just finished and uh, the teachers leading this were Jill Dawkey and Natalie Rushing and Andy Thompson. And if you're wondering what this is, this is called the Tin Man Project. And it is an example of a cooperative lesson which is a really big thing in the curriculum right now. Um, if you are curious, I think in your folders there's a copy of what is required, the lesson, the grading rubric, the reflection. This is an excellent um, example of, of some of the curriculum requirements now that teachers are expected to do. And what's really neat about this too is that um, this really puts the kids up front. They've gone through all the information, they've gone through the class. Um, in this, the student teams have designed projects using a box, a cone, and a cylinder. They had to give the measures, they had to give the, um, for the surface area, the dimensions. They had to collect all that ahead of time, then give it to the teacher. The teacher then took their dimensions and brought in the materials. So if the materials didn't match the actual project, they lost points, if it matched, they got points. But that, that was just one area. Um, it's, it's really cool because it, it's a neat form of assessment that's not necessarily a test, but it makes the kids 
use and demonstrate the knowledge of the information. So it's, it's really an excellent project. They get into it. It's, they had a lot of fun designing it. There's a whole rubric of how they were graded. And then at the end of it, they had reflections, how they got the formulas, how they got the information. And then they, they honestly just had a great time. I think these projects came in yesterday. And then by the end of the day, they were all over the school, um, kids taking pictures of them. They were hanging on trophy cases and teachers finding them in their rooms. And I found some in my room. And uh, one of the poor custodians got scared out of their wits when they opened up the bathroom stall. And it was sitting there on the back of the toilet. So, um, you know, again, it's great to have some fun. But the kids did a great job. The teachers did a great job. And um, again, it's not always about just testing homework. These cooperative projects are very big in, in the state of Illinois for curriculum. So just kind of wanted to share that with you and, and show you what some of the stuff we're doing. A couple other things. Um, <coughs> athletics, we've got some stuff coming up. Um, baseball was co-conference champions, and their regionals are a week from today at Triad. Girls softball just had their senior night. Um, was Monday and their regionals start Tuesday and the regionals are here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So if you're traveling through, watch out for the traffic and the pair, you know, everybody will be out there. Um, girls track left today for state at Eastern. They'll do practice today, um, qualifiers tomorrow morning, and then the actual, if anybody, whoever qualifies, then will compete in the finals on Saturday. Um, boys track had their sectional today and we've got results here for you. Um, so the team overall finished fourth. Um, the following individuals qualified for state today. The 4x4 four four relay team, Drew Wilkerson, Brendan Ming, Noah Williams, and Craig Collier with a time of 325.67, which is a new school record. Um, Craig Collier um, qualified in the 800 with a time of 159.67. Drew Wilkerson qualified in the 800 uh, with a time of 155.35, which is a new school record. Charlie Parrish in the 3200 at a time of 9.47.15. Brendan Mang in the long jump, 22 feet, 2.50 inches in the long jump, long jump. And Brendan Mang also in the triple jump, 44 feet, 5.5 inches. And Ian Alberts in the pole vault at 13 feet, 7 inches. So um, the boys will be taking off next week to do the state competition. Um, other than that, let's see. Um, girl soccer finished up, had a really strong season, had a really tough regional, and they wrapped up. And sports are, are starting to wind up, graduation, and it's just we're doing a lot of the end of the year stuff. So it's been a fabulous senior class, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to graduation. They've been absolutely great behavior wise and academic wise, and some of, some of the best scores we've seen across the board for some kids and, and where they're going to college. It, it's a really exciting time for us. So that's what I got. Thanks. Any questions about the principal's report? Okay, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. All right, uh, our, one of our neighbors to the, what would that be, southeast, uh, Smith and their superintendent, it was in the paper today that she has uh, turned her resignation in. Um, I just want to personally uh, thank her for her help um, through this past year for me. Um, Dr. Holmes is going to be taking a position as the Associate Director of the uh, Professional Development for the IPA. And so I know Smith is going to miss her. She was, uh, she was a really good one, so good luck to her. Um, legislative update. Uh, Does it require oh, a move? Is she going to still be in the area or does she have to go north? Um, in she, terms of the resource person. She'll have to uh, do some traveling, okay. yeah, and, and possibly do a little bit of relocation. She doesn't. I mean, she lives a little north here. Okay. I don't want to give her address out. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. No, no, I wouldn't. I, wouldn't I just wonder if she's going to be anywhere close proximity. Yeah. She, uh, she's a great, great lady. Great lady, and she's still. I've got herself, so that was a mistake she made. Uh, legislative update. Uh, I just got a notice today that that we should be on notice to start sending letters and things to our congressmen to oppose some of the legislation they think is coming down the pipe. So they didn't say what it is, but there is still uh, all kinds of talk. The I think I put it in the uh, write-up that the grand plan that they had talked about January and February, they thought uh, 
was possibly back on the table. Uh, they're still talking about the uh, <coughs> evidence-based funding model, uh, which is supposed to fully fund uh, education and uh, hold pretty much all districts harmless. Uh, the big stumbling block is it's not going to give as much money to the Chicago schools. And so um, I think there's a lot of, there obviously is a lot of political pull up there. So um, there's some um, people that are kind of putting up some walls on that. One of the proposals uh, was to um, what they called a five for five, which was to um, increase the uh, income tax, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a $5 million tax increase, which was going to come through an income tax, uh, which was the same uh, rate that they're talking about before, the 4.95, and then a $5 billion spending reduction, which is going to come mainly under uh, pension, uh, uh, reworking the pension, and then also looking at the tax caps, uh, which they've talked about uh, previously. So. Um, they tell us that things are going to happen pretty quickly here next week, so we'll we'll just keep our fingers crossed that so we don't get hurt too badly and, and keep moving forward. So, um, foundation uh, fundraiser. Want to let you know that uh, at one of the meetings, probably in March or April, I gave a foundation permission uh, as a fundraiser to sell two sets of four front row seats. Um, at the graduation, and those we used eBay, and those both sold for a total of about $885 for eight seats. So that was uh, a nice little fundraiser for them. Some people told me we ought to auction off every graduation to <laughs> raise some money, but uh, I'm not sure how well that would go over. But so that was a nice little fundraiser. Uh, Diane Chaper and I went to uh, two meetings last week on insurance. The first was uh, Egyptian Trust, which is the co-op that we belong in, uh, to for our health insurance. Uh, they are making two changes. One is they're starting to tier their um, uh, their costs, um, what they're charging schools. And so because of our the last two and a half years, our, um, our claims were low. We were put into the, the lowest tier of a 3% increase, which is very nice. Uh, some districts had a 20% increase. Uh, they weren't happy about that, so uh, they they think that's going to go on. So we'll continue to look at about a two and a half year period where they will uh, look at our um, claim history to see what our uh, tier what, what tier will be in. Uh, they also are looking at changing uh, the structure of how they do um, their out of. I just went blank on what that's called. Um, not out of market, gosh, Dixie. Um, what's it called? Out of network. Sorry about that. So they are have set it up, and they they're working with the company where nobody's going to be out of network anymore with the insurance. So uh, they are hoping that's going to reduce the cost. They're going to base their costs on the. Uh, Medicare level and then that's what they're going to go and, and try to negotiate these prices with these different vendors and they're hoping that's going to save us money. Uh, the second was a workman compensation uh, meeting with Prairie State Insurance Co uh, Cooperative uh, that was up in Springfield. Um, we did have a few claims there. There wasn't any uh, big changes. Uh, that fund is in very good shape but because we had uh, some big claims and working Workman compensation that uh, our premiums are going to go from about fifty thousand dollars last year to about sixty thousand next year. Um, it's about a twenty percent increase, uh, but all that is also paid out of tort, which is a good thing. But uh, so generally speaking, I think we we came out pretty well on the insurance, so that's that's a, a positive for us. And that that three percent increase is is it is included in that estimated salary and benefits that we talked about earlier, that we're still going to be less than what we were this year. So that's that's a positive. So that's my report. Okay. Any yes. questions about the superintendent's report? <coughs> I don't have a question. Any I comments? Forgot, I forgot two things. <laughs> Can I go back just real quick? Okay, back. First Thanks. Report. I'm so sorry. I was on my next page. Real quick, I wanted to let you know that post-prom and prom was excellent, and the American Legion Hall um, of St. Labore was incredibly complimentary of our students' behavior, their dress, the, the way they composed themselves. I'm just curious. They said it was a fantastic night. Post-prom was 
great. The prizes, I want to put my ticket in for those prizes. They're amazing. And uh, congratulations to Judy Evers, um, the prom committee, and Mrs. Brick Clace um, for post-prom and post-prom parents because they just outdo themselves every year. And real quick, um, speaking of Drew Wilkerson from earlier, um, his mom um, had sent an email to one of our teachers. I included it in your packet. I, I, it's really short. I just wanted to read it. Um, it was actually sent to Mrs. Minard, our guidance counselor, and it said, I know seniors are gone, but Drew took the calculus placement through Washington University today, and he placed into calculus two. Um, that Mrs. Dalkey is a gym, who is one of our math teachers. Um, thank goodness for tough teachers. I thought I'd share just in case any um, of your advisees or kids might need a point of reference for calc decisions in college. On a bigger note, we are very appreciative of all you have done for Drew. I know he and I took up a lot of your time this year, he has, and he operated on a last minute 911 basis. Um, too much for application, he owes you. Um, thank you for all you do to guide the kids who want the bigger challenge to be successful, whether it's scholar goal or career goals. Um, they need someone like you in their corner, and he really needed your help a lot. So have a great end of the year and a relaxing summer. So Drew's mom um, has been very instrumental and, and supportive of everything he's done here and, and a lot of people. And I know Drew would just be, you know, absolutely, you know, happy to talk anything about his experience. So just wanted to share that. Thanks. Were there any comments or questions on the superintendent's report? And we'll move on to old business, sidewalk project. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> this project, uh, there has been a lot of movement. We do have, uh, there has been some work done to do the, the bid specs by the architect. Uh, there'll be an advertisement in the Tribune that should be sent to the uh, Tribune for next week. Uh, the timeline is listed there. Uh, we're still hoping to uh, be able to complete this project in July, uh, August. Um, I just started to look at on the Iowa side to see if it's been uh, updated by the state and uh, <coughs> I haven't seen it yet so we're, we're still waiting for the state superintendent to sign off uh, we've been told that's not an issue at all but um, uh, when that happens we can actually start work but, but we can proceed until then okay any questions about that uh, kitchen management RFP uh, the pre-bid conference is tomorrow um, at, uh, I believe it's at 10 o'clock, and um, so we will, it'll be a, a very quick meeting, the, the majority of it will be to allow all the vendors that are coming in to put bids to take a tour of the kitchen, and for them to see the kitchen and what we have available, and so that they can determine how they're going to bid on it. And so that, again, is moving forward, and uh, so... Uh, Hopefully we'll have some more information at the June meeting. Questions or comments? Yeah. You know how many people are going to be bidding on that? Right. Good question. I mean, go, depends on who shows up. We're, we're required by law to submit to five companies. Okay. And so there, there are a list of um, pre-authorized companies that you can request to submit bids. And almost all of them are in Chicago except for three big companies here, the OPA, Sedesco, and Aramark. And so all those three people we've contacted, uh, they said they would be interested. The others were like Lucy's Catering in Chicago. <laughs> and so they, we contacted several of those and they said no, they were not interested. So I'm, I'm anticipating three at most. And one of them is that company that made the presentation. Mm -hmm. buses update uh, the buses have been delayed there's an issue with the uh, the chassis at the manufacturer so we are not anticipating uh, to get the uh, buses until July or early August uh, but there is an issue with having to um, qualify for the flow through money from bass so what we have done and I've asked uh, Diane to do we we've, we've got an invoice from the company and so that we can go ahead and get the invoice for the buses and uh, uh, make payments on the buses um, this year so that we can uh, have that, that activity bus paid for and then take delivery in July and August. Any questions about the new buses? Okay. 
Okay. On to new business. Transportation in lieu with CCSD. Uh, attachment five is a letter of understanding between us and the grade school district. Uh, we have shared uh, transportation costs with them for probably five or six years, I would think. And uh, so they, they hire two people. They hire the transportation director and the assistant to do the scheduling and, and a lot of maintenance, and then we help pay the cost for that. So they, they schedule all of our buses. We have, uh, we do have a fleet of buses, uh, 11 or 14 buses, but we only have three routes. We use the, other, the others are used for extracurricular, so they schedule all of that for us, and then we pay for their services. So this is a letter of understanding for us to, uh, be in agreement to share those expenses with the grade school. That's something we do every year. We, we've done this every year. Yes. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? We'll need a motion to approve the loop between FCHS and Freeburg 70. A motion to approve the letter of understanding between FCHS and Freeburg 70. Second. 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 We need to do a roll call vote on that. Start with Mr. Reynolds. Uh, yes. Aye. 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 Approved. Move on to the approval of the first reading of the federal year 17 budget. Um, as mentioned before, um, the budget is going to need to be amended, and the reason it's going to be a need to be amended is because. We spent uh, about $400,000 more in tort than we had budgeted in the fall um, because that was 10% more than the uh, budget fund. That means we're going to have to amend the budget. Um, the reason for this was um, just uh, some timing and finding documents uh, that were readily available with the, the turnover last year with the change in superintendents. And so uh, this works out. Uh, if we spend the budget, or I'm sorry, if we spend the amount of torque that we need to spend, it will reduce that balance to a, a reasonable balance and then use the torque the way it was intended <coughs> for both uh, Mr. Layman and myself. Any questions or comments? And, and maybe I'll, I think you asked a question last night. So we will have to go and do a budget hearing at the special board meeting. The reason we have to have a special board meeting because there has to be 30 days between this viewing of the budget in the board meeting. Since we moved that uh, meeting up in June, there wasn't going to be 30 days. So that's, my, and I anticipate that's the only action we'll have that night, special board meeting. Okay. That's a little point. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I need a motion to approve the first reading of the fiscal year 2017 amended budget as presented. So moved. Mr. Gov. Madrill second. We'll do a roll call vote for that. Mr. Madrill, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 Motion approved. Move on to Board of Education self-evaluation. Uh, this is something that uh, when I took over superintendent, a lot of the, the meetings I was going to for new superintendents, a lot of the uh, uh, schools were doing this, uh, where they bring in a representative from the IESB, Illinois Association of School Boards, and they sit down with the board and kind of work through um, uh, kind of uh, a way to um, get boards to, to start working uh, well from the get-go. And so I think this is a, uh, uh, a great time. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of uh, new members of the board. We've got, you know, relatively speaking, a, a very new superintendent. So it would be a good opportunity to uh, bring in a representative to sit down, um, listen to what he has to say, and then for us to kind of work through this. If we use a representative from the IESB, then we are allowed to do this in closed session. And so the fee for this is $400. I think that's well worth it. So what I'm asking is that uh, the board give me permission to speak with uh, Larry Dirks's name from the ISB, I'm sorry, the IASB, and uh, to schedule time and schedule it so that everybody can make it and so he says it'll be about a three-hour meeting any questions or comments on that this kind of reminds me of things that used to happen in education in the 70s and 80s <laughs> and even the 90s and basically those those were uh, for 
different faculty groups got together, different from different disciplines, different schools got together, different uh, 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 represent, representatives of schools, and, and uh, it creates a, a broader vision and celebrates the differences. You know, and, and um, I'm kind of glad to see that we're doing this. I think it's a nice idea. I think it's a good idea. It's kind of refreshing. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to move to direct Mr. Ferking to schedule a special board of education meeting to conduct a board of education self-evaluation with ISB field director Larry Dirks. I need a second. I'm second. Mr. Reynolds, second. We'll do a roll call vote for that. Ms. Miller, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next item is we need to schedule a building and grounds committee meeting. Well, uh, I had actually started to put this in um, the agenda when I when I start the write up last week or whatever it was, and, and actually Mr. Reynolds uh, had uh, had the same idea, so he's contacted the board, uh, the members of the Building and Grounds Committee to begin this process. Um, I think this is a, uh, a committee that's uh, very important. There's a lot of things in the building that we need to address, and I think uh, by meeting, uh, uh, one of the things we want to do is take a tour of the building and really kind of prioritizing what needs to be done kind of start moving forward with making improvements that need to be made uh, using some of the money that we have. Uh, and I think we're on to the 30th. Correct. So we're looking like uh, uh, May 30th, and did we say seven? Let's say seven o'clock. And so um, that's open to the public, any board member that would like to come in, um, I'll kind of walk you around and we can look at some of the, <coughs> the, the bad, the ugly of the school as we um, see talk about what needs to be done and that no action needs to be taken because it's already been taken. Okay. Uh, we need to appoint a vast governing board this design. Uh, this is the board representative that meets uh, quarterly um, at VASC and uh, in an advisory uh, capacity for them. They get monthly updates from VASC and uh, VASC is our uh, special education cooperative that we use for a lot of our services. And um, so this is a, I think it's a very important uh, uh, position. And so um, we just, I didn't put anybody in there. I thought if somebody would like to volunteer to do that, I'll step back so nobody knocks me over. <laughs> we have a right skill set. Who has the right skill set? Somebody in education. Depends on what the meetings are. I mean, the yeah. first one I believe they said was June 21st. I had that down somewhere. But I mean, is it during oh, yeah. the day? Week? It's an evening. In the evenings? Mm -hmm. Do you know what time? Usually 6:30, I think. Okay. And it's, yeah. I don't know. As long as it's in the evenings. And there's usually a dinner involved. From what my mom told me, there was a dinner. She's like, it's a good, it's a good thing to get involved with. But Kim Towers was doing it, so I didn't volunteer for it. And well, now my plate is full. <laughs> <laughs> no, Elaine, Elaine did that. And she did that for quite that. a few years. And, uh, and I guess they meet over in that. In Bass, which is right before, once you get across the... Agreement there. Right, right, the Metrolink before you get to... And, and we rely heavily on Bass for all of our special services. So it, it's 6.30 a, it's a, would be, I would be able to make those meetings. What we'll do is we'll forward your name if you get voted in. And uh, they'll, they'll, we'll give you your contact, they'll be in contact and send you all that stuff. Okay, we need a motion to approve I'll move that motion. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Goss, a motion to approve Victoria Stubb to serve as the Bass Governing Board designing for Freeburg Community High School. Do we have a second? If, if I may second that. Well, <laughs> second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you, Victoria. Okay. Okay. Point uh, for do we have any board correspondence? We do. Um, I received an email. I believe all board members received an email from uh, Freeburg resident Bill Wilson, and I told him I would read the correspondence at tonight's meeting. It says, Dear FCHS School Board, I am a child of the 60s and 70s and, and graduated high school in the 80s. By the end of that decade, young people were dressing much differently than the students of just a few years earlier and from those of today. Out were cowl necks, shirts, sweaters, pantsuits, leisure suits, uh, in the mini skirts, or in with mini skirts, leg warmers, and parachute pants. Ideas about the connection between formality and respective change. Bands used to wear suits and uh, fedoras to baseball games. 
Now even grown-ups show up dressed as their favorite players. At the Opera House, they are still aficionados who arrive in tuxedos, but others walk in with jeans. Nobody kicks them out or tells them to go home to change. The compulsion or desire by many of the students to do so may be, or I'm guessing here, also a response to how much more stringent high school days are today compared to when you and I were walking the halls in particular, or in parachute pants. Or maybe they just wanted to be a part of a tradition that we all took part of when we graduated from high school. Schools tell students what to do every day. Students are told what not to wear, what not to say, and how they should act in every situation. Graduation is a once-in-a-lifetime event to celebrate 13 years of hard work and dedication, and never mind that once upon a time the simple cap toss signified to everyone involved a jettisoning of the past, a thrust into the future, goals accomplished, and new ones on the table. Unlike every School's Out for Summer scene, played out by every generation before them, the kids of today have been led to believe that throwing their caps in the air or celebrating their accomplishments as individuals are, per school rules, and no uh, semblance of ceremonial gusto is a bad thing. Is there anything that says freedom and possib or possibility more than the sight of a decorated flying graduation cap? It's a symbol of hard work paying off, a good uh, job well done true graduation into what comes next. As they say, times change and for many, so it may be time to accept that the time for putting messages and flowers on your cap or even tossing them uh, for graduation has arrived. Thank you, Bill Wilson. Any comments on that? Do you guys have your finger on the pulse of any new ideas from the student body Precipitated this or no one, had, no one has talked to me about it or brought it up, so this is the first time hearing of it. But I, that, I just that received made a, talk. a phone call today from Mr. Wilson about it. Oh, okay, yeah, I thought if there was an underlying desire among the group of students or something like that. My son's a senior, and after, after getting the email, I asked him what he thought because. He's pretty laid back, he kind of really doesn't care about most of that stuff, and I was really surprised to hear that he is, he does, he would like to toss his cap. Um, I am concerned about, you know, throwing a cap and coming down and poking someone in the eye or something, you know. There are those concerns, but I think most of them are smart enough, they're graduating high school, not to look up and get poked in the eye. <laughs> Do they rent those things? No. no, they buy them. Okay. Oh, so yeah. they'll... It's their loss. So they their their it. We, we have, since I've been here, we've said no, and, and the reason we give them is we feel like it's it's kind of disrespectful and kind of diminishes what the graduation stands for. It's more of a um, ceremony. And so that's that's what we've said. Um, and so when he called, that's what I told him. So I got a letter several hours later. I've attended every graduation at the college. There, there are adults there, there are kids, and there are you know, 19 year olds, and there are 87 years old. A guy walked across the stage and got a standing ovation uh, for getting a degree in, in uh, welding. He was a uh, retired farmer, and uh, nobody's, nobody fills their hats there again. And they rent them, and they got a, they got a return on it. It was funny, but that's, that's right. a different thing. I've had five seniors out of the house today, and I asked them a question too because I got a phone call too, and they were all kind of like, hmm. "That's the only response I got." We usually haven't had. There is a movement. Yeah, on social there media. is a movement on social media. Asking parents, they're asking for the opportunity to let their children throw their hats in the celebration. I think there are some that really want it. I think there are some that don't really care, and I think there are some that want to keep their caps. I mean, is this something the student council can, I mean, can the students make this decision? This, you know. um, I, I don't, I think it'd be better if it was just directed about what you want to do, yes or no. Um, as far as putting tape and stuff on it, I just want to make sure I don't have to go through, honestly, and check everybody's hats to make sure there's nothing inappropriate from up in the stands. And I'd like to think that all of our kids would awesome about that but it just takes one and then we're all going to be getting calls but you know again as of just today this afternoon I hadn't heard from anybody yay or nay or 
you know, and, and I can definitely see some kids wanting to do it, and some, again, like, uh, you know. Can there maybe be a compromise? Not inside the building right during the ceremony, but have a meeting place outside afterwards and say, hey, everybody would like to. That and that, and this is where we're going to meet, and we're going to do it at this time, and somebody, so and so is going to direct it, and they all do it, and you can get the picture, and it's done. What's, what's, what's they're done, and they walk out. We're, we're, we don't. We don't really well, have it. Then we're kind of not responsible for it, too. Yeah. I mean, we can get sued for anything. That's true. That's so, true. That's true. Yeah. So but. it's just, for me, and it, it, it's, it's not a huge issue, um, uh, it, it, it just, you know, we've, we've had a ceremony, and I think it goes well, and it goes fairly quickly, and we do the things, we have nice speeches, and I just, to me, it takes away from it. That's just my thought. It's class of 86. <laughs> right. Yes, you right. did. Well, then the issue is, okay, if this class does it, what do we do next time? No, I'm mean, not mistaken. There's no policy saying we can't that it can't be done. No, but there also isn't every rule that you know True. everything that we okay. ask a student to do is written down. So there's there are directives that we give students that we expect them to follow. Um, now that being said, um, I can't hold their diploma. So what we're going to do is explain to them that we would like this to be a um, an important and a uh, solemn graduation and that we respectfully ask them that they don't do it and uh, I mean, you get 160 kids together and if they don't follow what you say it could be interesting just a guy, there's a guy sitting here that can only see out of one eye I think about that uh, Christmas story movie about the shoot your eye out <laughs> a, a, a mortarboard has four corners on it and we're going to be looking up, and you know, one could come come down and, you know, and hit somebody, and probably that won't happen. But but I uh, again, I can only see that one. I think about stuff like that. I personally think we should learn that more. I wonder why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, you know, as far as the stickers and things, I mean, I think we tell them that they have to be appropriate. I, think I guess with the stickers, I would rather the. My personal gut feeling is I'd rather they not. I, I they had that in college when I went to college and uh, graduated. They had the arrow, you know, and hi mom and you know send money or whatever they put on them. But to me, that seems like that would be more of a of a college thing. And I understand. And we didn't throw our caps in college, and we didn't throw our caps in high school thanks to Vicky's class. <laughs> <laughs> me, me personally, I'm okay with them throwing them, but whenever I brought that up with my wife, she was like, do you, do you remember the chaos after Tori graduated and after Libby graduated, of everybody getting out into the hallway and all the parents out there to grab their kid to get their pictures, and if they, if they have to now go back in and find that cap because mom wants the picture with the cap on, now they're fighting the flow, um, and she had, she's like, I like options. She, she had said, uh, I think you had said, what would be another option? And maybe a suggestion would be, after you guys leave, form rank and file, all file outside, and, and, and do it out in front of the building, um, that might be a decent option. And then that way, they're not fighting through everybody to come back to try to find that cap and grab that cap and, tassel. and the tassel, and it might, they might the lose tassel. that tassel. Right. Um, Ms. Meath had said something before the meeting about, and then if they all get trampled, mom wants to keep that nice, and now it's mangled. I could go either way as far as the long and inside, but maybe a suggestion to tomorrow when you're doing the practice. Here's an idea, guys. You know, we talked about it at the board meeting, and here are the here are the cons that, that they have brought up, and maybe an option would be to go outside. So that's just my two cents. I think uh, I think inside during the ceremony, I think we should not spill the caps. I think outside is probably better place for it because I think it, it it would to me it kind of interrupts the the program even though it's at the very end he says you're probably gonna have kids scuffling where's my hat at right and it's just gonna hold everything up to get the gym cleared out so I, I'd rather not see it during the ceremony I think it's a good compromise for those who want to because obviously 
some of them don't even care. I mean, I think it's, it's for those who want to, I think it's a good compromise. Just to do, go provide outside. that suggestion to right. them tomorrow when you go through the practice. But not to do it during the ceremony. Yeah. That sounds good. <laughs> I'm already right having that com conversation with him, but I also don't want to make fun of Right. Right. Sure. Makes sense. There's honestly, once they walk out, there's nothing. There's nothing I'm going to be able. To, there's nothing I would do anyway, honestly. You know, unless it was, you know, we had a major incident where we had to call. To, we can't hold transcripts, and I'm definitely. We are not calling them back in to suspend them or. They're out the door. Yeah, that, whenever I was, they threatened me they don't learn diploma. At that time, I was a dumb kid. Now I'm told that wasn't legal. <laughs> there might be some that don't believe me, but I'll, you know. <laughs> so, Jill's going to give the evil eye. Okay. So, okay. that's enough. Okay, I think that's what we'd like to do. Okay, all right. Uh, next item is agenda items. Addenda, no. Addenda, I'm sorry. No, never mind. Okay. At this time, we do have. Oh, we do have a reason to go into closed session, right? So we need a motion to go into closed session. So move. Mr. Gopp, second by Mr. Reynolds. <coughs> roll call that. Mr. Gopp, so Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Uh, I'd like to thank the public for coming tonight. We're going to go into thank closed you. sessions. <laughs>